In this installment, we have the Thursday night football showdown, a big AFC North matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef Dan. I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your Thursday night football showdown between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. But before I deep dive into that, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MensonHSD. Don't forget about the TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about the Patreon if you want more DFS, betting, and fantasy football advice. All of those links will be provided down below. I ain't gonna lie to you guys, this Thursday night football matchup is gonna be very, very tough to decipher. So I'm going to try to point you in the direction where there is high volume, right, usage. So starting at these captain position, um, obviously we're gonna start off with Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is one of the most efficient running backs in the league. Right now he's top five in fantasy points as well. Already has 228 yards rushing and three touchdowns. In this AFC North matchup, he does have a bad history going up against these Pittsburgh Steelers. As you can see, fantasy points per game, uh, 2.1, 9.5, 9.2. He only has one game that went over double-digit fantasy points, and that was January 3rd in 2021 with 19.8. All right. So that can definitely happen again. Hopefully, that's what we're looking for in this particular game because they have to lean on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The Browns need their running game, okay? This is not a situation where they have Baker Mayfield. They have Jacoby Brissett, okay? So we have inc inconsistency at the quarterback position on both sides of the ball, even though there's talent for wide receivers on both sides of the ball, all right? More talent on the Pittsburgh side, obviously, but they're going to need to lean on the running back. So usage-wise, Nick Chubb is going to be a candidate as a captain. Other guys we're going to look at is going to be Najee Harris. This particular top tier running back here is going to get a lot of usage as well we saw around 21 touches in week two and he saw around 12 touches in week one we need an increase from week one so we saw that in week two hopefully he gets a similar amount of production in this one he's being utilized in a rushing game and receiving game five receptions on six targets last week was good to see so i can definitely go that way if we think Najee harris is going to get a high volume maybe he squeaks in for a touchdown and we could definitely pay off salary that way. All right. Another guy we're going to focus on at captain um, can be Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper showed up in week two against the Jets. Poor performance against Carolina. Um, that was just an ugly game. This one against the Jets opened things up a little bit more. They scored 61 points total. That's not going to be the norm. Uh, Amari Cooper obviously still has the juice. And as you saw, he had nine receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown. 20 fantasy points. Very, very impressive to see from that. He's someone that you can consider at that captain position. That is going to get a high volume. Um, other ways we can look at this, I don't think we should go with the quarterback position. But if you feel like... This should be an under, all right? This is an in-division matchup here between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. I don't trust Jacoby Brissett, even though the ownership on either one of these quarterbacks is going to be super, super low. No one's going to have this idea of putting a quarterback um, at the captain position. Usually, it's going to be a playmaker, all right? Mr. Trubisky has upside because not only can he throw inefficiently, but he can also have the rushing ability, all right? If he gets in with a scamper, all right, which he has the ability to, he has the legs, um, then Mitchell Trubisky can break the slate if he's able to use his, his rushing ability, all right? Matt Canada's offense uh, right now, it's a lot of low A dot passes, okay? Five, six, seven yards down the field. Very short passes, similar to what they were doing last year with Ben Roethlisberger. They need to stretch the field, okay? If Joe Flacco can stretch the field against the Browns defense, Mitch Trubisky, there's hope. Maybe there's hope that he can prove to this team because if he comes out with another poor performance, they're going to Kenny Pickett very, very soon, all right? So this is like a must show up for Mitchell Trubisky because he's on the hot seat. All right. He's on the hot seat. Kenny Pickett is right behind him. And Kenny Pickett, I guarantee you, is going to stretch the field. Mitch Trubisky is not doing that right now. I don't think things turn around um, because he's just been a backup and an average quarterback uh, or below average quarterback 
all his career, pretty much. So Mr. Trubisky at 8,600, if you're willing to take that bullet, he has the talent to throw to. If you're willing to take that bullet, then you can lean on Trubisky over Brissett. All right. Trubisky has more upside than Brissett. Um, if we're going with a quarterback captain, other guys we're going to look at is going to be Kareem Hunt. All right. If Nick Chubb is failing, Kareem Hunt is going to come in and he's going to be utilizing that passing game as well. He's getting carries, as you saw, 11 and 13. The question is, who's getting those goal line carries? Obviously, Nick Chubb is going to be first. If he needs a breather, Kareem Hunt is going to be that guy. We saw high potential in Kareem Hunt in week one against Carolina, 23 fantasy points. We saw a touchdown rushing and we saw a touchdown receiving. All right. So there is upside going with Kareem Hunt at that captain position, save some salary and go some other ways, because in this matchup, we're going to this is when we bring in kickers and this is when we bring in defenses. All right. On either side of the ball um, for Browns and Steelers. All right. So Kareem Hunt is going to be a guy we can look at at the captain position this slate right now like i said you're gonna it's it's not a one bullet uh type of lineup you need multiple lineups you're gonna have to have bring through a couple game scenarios uh for you to have lineup builds all right it can't just be one i don't think you're you'll be lucky if you figure it out on one lineup you need about 10 20 utilize uh roto grinders and have them print out a whole bunch of lineups for you all right for you to figure this one out okay let's continue to go down Pratt fire move has been super super consistent all right i like him as a captain position here we see week one week two we're looking for volume we're looking for consistency and we saw five for 10 targets 75 yards in week one against cincinnati and in week two four receptions seven targets 22 yards and a touchdown from pat fire move so we're looking at things. He's rolling over to this uh, next year fine, all right, from switching over from Ben Roethlisberger to Mitchell Trubisky. He's been uh, a key component in the red zone as well. He's doing great route running, winning on one-on-ones. Pat Fryer move is a very solid, solid um, tight end. He can be top tier very soon. Hopefully, we get an upgrade at quarterback. But Pat Fryer move is someone that we're going to be looking at, all right? Next guy that has upside is going to be obviously Deontay Johnson. We need we need separation. We need deep targets, but he's the main target getter on this offense right now. Seven for 12 and six for 10 in the first two games. But we need more average um, yards per attempt. OK, we got nine point five and we got seven point nine in the first two games. We need. 10 11 12 13 yards down the field but that's i don't know what's wrong with this offense they are not stretching the field but deontay johnson is someone that you can rely on um for this particular state that's going to get a high volume someone that's getting double digit targets is someone i want in all of my lineups all right so deontay johnson is a guy that we can look at uh claypool at 6200 but i think that's as much as we go for the captains once we get to deontay johnson and Pat Fryer move, that's how far we go. Let's move over to the flex position, guys. All right. And that's the that's where I'm gonna start at. I'm gonna start at Chase Claypool. If he breaks one of his either uh, rushing attempts, that's gonna be a big upside right there. If he wins one on one as a wide receiver, Chase Claypool can definitely break a slate at 6,200. He's someone that you can fill in as your flex spot, not too expensive, but he's getting a high uh a high allotment of routes between him and george pickens all right so we like chase claypool next on the list i just spoke about him is george pickens pickens is starting in uh two wide receiver sets uh for the pittsburgh steelers um and we just need more uses from him obviously three targets in the first two games each but we know the upside from him in preseason he can be dominant so george pickens he just needs that one that one catch that one catch and that is going to set him apart so george pickens is someone that we can throw in at 4800 in the flex position let's see if we can find some more gems uh down here as we continue to go down we got donovan people jones and david and joku for the cleveland browns uh dpj showed up in week one and then came up with a complete zero in week two i don't know what happened I have no idea what happened uh, in that Jets game. It was more of a Mari Cooper show and David Njoku. 
And from there on, Donovan Peoples-Jones was just the third option. OK, but in the Carolina game, uh, they must have had a more focus on Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples Jones was more dominant. OK, so we had six for 11 targets and 60 yards. He looked like he could be a breakout this season. And in week two, Amari Cooper showed out. So Amari Cooper is still the number one. DP, DPJ is technically around that third option on this offense. And then with Joby, Jacoby Brissett not throwing at a high volume in a game that I, I think is going to be closer and it's not going to be a high scoring affair, then we can probably leave him as one of our uh, last options as a flex at 5,400. All right. Someone do I like that I like more than uh, DPJ will be David Njoku. David Njoku has been getting targets. We saw him utilize more in week two. And like I said, he's the top five paid tight end. All right. Right. They're going to utilize him. They set up a couple screens for David Njoku. So we see the urgency um, that they want to utilize him. And he had a nice average um, per target in week two against the Jets at 10.7. All right. Um, he had some drops. So we need to fix that and clean that up. But David Njoku is going to be a, a supreme athlete at that tight end position. We're waiting for him to break out. And I think it's going to happen pretty soon. So someone that I think is going to be very sneaky that you should have in each one of your uh, lineups at that flex position will be David Njoku. All right. They paid him a lot of money. They're utilizing him more often now. And they're even setting up tight end screens for him. They did it twice last week against the Jets. So David Njoku is going to be someone that we can focus on um, at that flex position. Defenses, it's valid for both sides. Give me Steelers defense and Browns defense. Don't trust neither one of these quarterbacks in, in Trubisky and Brissett. So both of these defenses are going to be viable in this AFC North matchup. All right, let's clear out some other spots so I can give you a few more flex plays. And that's going to be kickers as well. We have Cade York, who has a very solid leg. Um, and this, where you're just looking for someone that can get you double digit points, which should be a, a, a low scoring affair, not a lot of touchdowns. These kickers are going to come up huge. All right. Defenses already start at 10 points. If it's not high scoring affair, they're not going to fluctuate that much. All right. You just need a, t a turnover and they're going to go up or a sack or a fumble. And they're going to go up and be higher than all these other players. All right. Same things for kickers. Kickers. If they're hitting long field goals, 40, 50 yarders, they're going to get quicker points than these other players in this type of matchup. So we're going to look at Kate York. We're going to look at Boswell. Both of these guys right here on both sides of the ball are going to be viable for this matchup. All right. If you feel more strongly about Cleveland, then obviously you're going to go with Cleveland Kate York or Cleveland defense. If you feel strongly about Pittsburgh, you're going to go with Chris Boswell and Steelers defense okay if we find see if we have any other cheap gems down down low because there could be some weird touchdown that comes out of nowhere uh, once we go below the kickers and the defenses uh we got anthony schwartz here who's the third wide receiver for cleveland who you could go to i don't think we need to at all i think there's enough salary here where we're going to be paying down Instead of trying to fill in, there's not a slate where we're going to just smash in Chubb, Harris, and Cooper and think you win because that's not going to happen, all right? So if you want to save salary, I advise to go with kicker or defenses. And below those guys, I want to stay away. Um, so that's how I think this slate is going to go down for our flexes. More defenses, more kickers. If we're paying up and captain, we got to go with high usage guys. We got uh, Deontay Johnson. We got Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. And Pat Fryer moves those guys, four guys that we can look at. If you want to save a little more salary um, at that captain, then you can go Kareem Hunt. He's going to get utilized in the rushing and receiving game. Okay, similar to a Najee Harris. All right, so that's going to be the breakdown for this Thursday night football matchup that we got between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back, back very, very soon with another video. All right, peace out, guys.